So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to um, some belt cracking. So if you have a belt, grab it. If not, uh, pretend. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Schweigel belts are thinner um, and a little bit more thinner, a little bit sturdier, I'd say, than um, judo or BJJ belts. Um, when you tie them on, Schweigel belts, when you tie them on correctly, which I'll show in a second, they don't come out. Like, they're very tight. But that also means that they're very uncomfortable on your hands when you, when you use them. Traditionally, it was a leather strap that people used, not um, belts. Oh, yeah, you take this one. I'll take this one. It's mine. Um, and so I tend to use BJJ belts or judo belts. I have an old um, judo belt here. I don't even know where I got it. Um, and that's what I tend to use. But in a pinch, uh, a Schweigel belt work. But I'm guessing not many of you have Schweigel belts. Whatever belt you have works, okay? So let's first, um, let's just play with it, and we'll try the movement out, and then I'll explain it. So thirds is what you want to wrap it in first to start off with. That's a good place to start. In thirds, so it measures basically from the center of your chest out to an ex extended arm, all right? Now, the first movement we're going to do is just called dingbu do, dingbu do, which means fixed stance do, which I'll, um, I'll explain in a second. So what you can do, hands at your hips, one arm out in front of you on your center line, okay? And when you bring this arm out, bring one side of the body out a little bit too, okay? Stay relaxed. It should be relaxed right now, okay? Now you're just going to fire it out, okay? Relax and then fire it out and then relax and fire it out. And every once in a while you gotta adjust. Good, keep, just keep trying it a little bit. I'm just kind of watching. Okay, so let's um, talk about this a little bit. We have a saying in Shuai Jiao, Pi Tiao Jiang Do, means the strap teaches Do. Do can translate to um, cracking, seizing, shaking. It's kind of uh, hard to translate because all those words in English have other meanings as well, okay? But it's basically like if you were to pluck a bowstring and it, you have that vibration, okay? That's do, right? That's do. Um, you see it in like uh, traditional martial arts, like when they have a spear and they take the spear out and they do something with the spear and the end of the spear vibrates. That's do, okay? So now in Shuaijiao, we have um, our three main um, pieces of equipment, the small stick, the big stick, and the um, belt. And we say the big stick teaches hung, the small stick teaches shu, and the, the belt teaches do. And so these are sort of energies that um, we use for off balancing or for using techniques, okay? So like I was, I mentioned like, you know, uh, earlier in the week on one of my stories on Instagram, this is about what do you do to the opponent. It's not just what your movement looks like. It's what you do to the opponent to um, create this off-balancing. You always have to be connected to what the purpose of the movement is. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. So, when, so for example, if I'm doing um, hung, which is the one that we use from the belt, or from the big stick, which is another Shuai Jiao equipment tool, hung, is used to, to make him take a step that he does not want to take by lifting up his center a little bit. I'm just going to do a demonstration of it, all right? So if I'm here, this is hung, right? If I have him here and I see that sort of explosive shake that gets him to move forward, right? I have this connection, right? Maybe I get in that position and I, that little yank gets his center moving forward. Really, I don't, it's not a big pull like this. It's a small sort of kind of just, you know, pop 
to get him off. Dough is used, that when you do dough, it's used to sort of rattle him a little bit, right? You just sort of rattle him a little bit. So I might be in this position and sort of rattle him and I sneak in for the, for the move. So it's quick, it's just this like shake, right, that you put into your, put into the person. You know, I might have it here, I might give him a little shake in the elbow to loosen it up, to get it coming up, right? I might have my hand here, and I can use this here to shake and get that to move into position. So it's a small, explosive movement. It's not necessarily to um, make him move, it's to rattle him a second to give you a point, uh, a moment to enter into a throw. Without the jacket, it's usually done, you know, at the neck, at the shoulder, um, at the arm. Uh, you can use, you know, even in here, you know, you can kind of like shake it out. It, it, use it to kind of get a balance, uh, off balance. Let's just get that little opportunity to get in for a throw. When you, with the jacket on, well, then you can really rattle people quite a lot, you know. So that's the purpose of dough. When I see, I see a lot of people when they do bow cracking, it tends to just be in the arms, right? Or they do all these sort of fancy movements. And yeah, you can do that to kind of fill time and to work on coordination. But this movement comes from the waist, up through the body into the back. So when I'm doing dough with the belt, you want to find this sort of relaxed wave that goes out, right? Wave, it hits, and I'm instantly relaxed. Right after it hits, I'm instantly relaxed, right? It goes out, and I'm instantly relaxed at this position, okay? But it's coming, you know, like this. It's not straight, it's just relaxed. Everything pops out explosive. Because, you know, if I have this big long wave, now I can make that smaller, you know, with my movement, however I want to do it, right? Yeah, I was joking, this is like, this is just for demonstration purposes, this doesn't mean anything, right? Those like one-handed sort of like no inch things, which aren't useful at all really, but you know, if you're just kind of, <laughs> his nose is, I just, <clears throat> you know, like just <clears throat> through the person, if you have that connection, right, you can use that to shake him off, right? To kind of shake him and then create an opportunity to enter in for something. So soft, explode at the end, okay? You have to be soft at the end because after you do a move like that on somebody, that moment where you relax is when you enter, right? You've done that explosion, you've kind of shook them a little bit. Right after you've done it, you have this small moment where if you relax, they're still riding themselves and you have that opportunity to get in. And then of course with the jacket, it's great, you just shake them around and you can do what you want with them, all right? So try it again, nice and relaxed. Fine, start relaxed from the waist, feel this sort of roundness wave in the movement, snaps out and catches and you relax instantly with the movement. And if you hear a snap, a good snap, then you know you might have done it right. And you know, also you get a lot of overlap with this in other areas of your arts as well, right? Try to keep the, the lower body, in this one, keep the lower body stable. If you keep the lower body stable, then it's coming from your waist and your back and not movement like this in the legs. That way, when you need it, you don't need as big of a movement. It can come from, you know, from popping up here without having to have too big of a movement, right? So straight out, it comes straight out. And to be honest, the, 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 the line of the belt, the line of the arm, like where it actually ends up is not super important because this, this is building that, this is like, a, you know, building um, that strength, that specialized strength in the body. It's not a specific, you know, technique necessarily need to be here or there. So once you find that, that pop, then it doesn't matter exactly where you do it or how you do it, right? It's kind of like you, can, you could do it off to the side 
or like all these other movements that we have, okay? But as with most training tools, there's going to be one or two exercises that are core and that are the most important and where you're going to get the most of the, most of the benefit out of them. And then everything after that, all the other ones, are sort of a uh, variety for fun, you know, like that 80-20 rule. You know, spend 80% of your time working on just a few of, your, few of your basics and fundamentals and the other 20% of the time doing um, more uh, fun stuff, right, for variety. So if you've watched, we have, you know, this is core. Right, creating that. Then we have, you know, where you do, you know, one, two, three, where I'm working a slightly different rhythm. That's another good core one. But then you have all these other ones where you're working techniques, you know, here. And to be honest, those um, don't have as much benefit. They're fun, but they shouldn't make up the, the large portion of your, your training. The training is to develop that um, feeling, that power in the waist through the belt, and then go take it to your grip fighting and your sparring and use it, right? Not go and take it into other drills and play with it. So that's belt cracking, okay? Nice and relaxed. You can, as you're doing this, you can play with speed. You can play with the rhythm. So you can do it slow, or you can try to go faster, right? Or you can change the rhythm up. So you work those reactions that you would have with an opponent, right? You know, maybe you needed to do it twice. Palm off balance one way, do it again, okay? So, does anybody uh, have any questions on that right now before we maybe practice a little bit and move on? I'll just kind of look and see. Ian, yeah. So when you initiate the movement for the belt cracking, are you looking more for the claw or are you looking more towards the lower back where you start the movement from? What, waist and lower back. Waist and lower back. Thank you. For sure, yeah. Anybody else? I'm kind of scanning. <laughs> I don't know if you, you might have to raise your hands or something. I don't know. Um, but this is a, um, a, a really good movement. The better you get at it, the more tiring it'll become because the more explosive you'll be. It's one of those things that the first times you do it, you know, of course, it's probably going to look more, um, more like, you know, <laughs> you know, this kind of stuff. But as you get better at it, you want it to loosen up. You also want to kind of see how, if you look, my, my sort of, I have sort of a neutral frame. My hips, my knees, my shoulders kind of are all relaxed in a neutral frame. And so as soon as I go through this movement, I'm back to that neutral frame instantly, right? So I'm able to explode into a position and relax right away. So you're ready to do what else, um, anything else you want to do. Um, a, like a good, um, a, a, an older Shui Jiao teacher told me that Shui Jiao is explode, relax, explode, which means explode to off balance, relax to enter, explode to finish. And so working on those transitions are very difficult sometimes, being able to transition from uh, uh, you know, an explosive movement directly into a relaxed movement back into an explosive movement, creating that chain. Um, it takes time. So, um, yeah, is, I see a uh, Holly. Yeah, go ahead. When you're, thanks, uh, when you're doing the belt snapping, are your knees slightly bent? Yes, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of, when I, uh, going into this stance like so, it, what it does is it, is it, um, you can create a, 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 a frame with your lower body, sort of a, 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 a um, stable frame. Now you can move the rest of the body with it, and that's gonna get more movement and, and focus in the back and the waist as you're doing it. If, if the movement comes down to the legs too much, 
what ends up happening is we, we rely on just the, the outer motion of just kind of doing this versus the feeling of the move of a, of a stable lower body from just from this position being able to sort of, you know, you know, go through that to explode out. If we make it too big, then we're reliant on a big move, which you might always, you know, when you're, when you're um, grappling or, or you don't have, sometimes you don't have space for a big move. A lot of times you definitely do not have time for a big move. It needs to be small and explosive. So um, creating that lower frame is, 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 is important, which is why when we go into that kind of one, two, three, you know, you step to another frame and then kind of like, I'm keeping this frame even as I'm moving through it. I'm not doing this, you know? I, I keep that frame as you move through it so you know you're, you're transferring and moving the weight as needed. So, it's a good question. Any, anybody else otherwise? Yeah, uh, Milo. Milo, yeah? Milo, yeah, can you hear me? Um, yeah. So in the belt track, you were saying you want to keep, at the end of range, you want to keep your pelvis neutral. So you're not letting it get, come forward. There's yeah. a whip, and then your back can be closer than your head. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. So, you know, you have a, this neutral position, and this neutral position should be treated as like your, your, your constant. So as soon as you explode forward, the body, and, and relax, it wants to reset right away back to the neutral position so you're ready for the very next thing versus going out and being stuck in a twisted position that's for this drill right now right of course there might be situations where you want to stay in that position to set something else up but otherwise you know it's you just want to get this habit of you know pops out and everything resets to where it wants to be like and, and actually the waist just kind of <laughs> it just kind of wiggles a little bit right just kind of turns like that to create that explosion. And, it's, and like I said, it takes a while to get. It takes, it takes um, consistent training for a while to, to get it. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? No? All right. Let's, um, let's, go, let's go on to the Shui Jiao jacket. Just give me a second. I'm going to put on a, a, a jacket. And um, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit.